you know, first of all, I just want to thank Mountaineer Nation and our fans and and everybody that showed up on, you know, the, the weather wasn't the best by any means, and, and we still got 11-5 here uh, for a team that, you know, needs all that support each and every night because it, uh, it really goes a long way with our energy and our program. So uh, first and foremost, credit to those fans, and thank you so much for, for being here and continuing to back us uh, through, through this season. So um, hard-fought victory. You know, I think uh, the buy-in for us defensively, and uh, some some changes schematically was was probably the key. And uh, our guys did a heck of a job in the last couple of days, and you know, made those changes and and locked in on it, and and uh, had a lot to do with uh, coming out with a victory tonight. So Josh, some of those changes obviously must have been defense, but just talk about the defense overall. You've been it's been a struggle this year. Best game so far? Did you did you like what you did defensively for some twenty two turnovers? Yeah, that was you know, I didn't realize we turned you know, turned them over twenty two times. That's uh that's gotta be the most all year by by far and and it wasn't pressure by any means. It was uh you know, like I told those guys that if if we don't get spread and take a different approach and not get so spread and and you know have each other's back. We can put as much ball pressure as possible if, if you know we we pack it in a little bit. So uh, they bought into it and the credit to our staff. Our staff really uh, you know put together a real good game plan in terms of uh, you know implementing it on a short notice and uh, excellent job by them and 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 owning the defensive end and and uh, locking in and, and selling it to our guys. So um, credit to them and, and credit to our guys for, for buying in and, and locking in on it. It was a very physical game. Uh, how did you push the button? What button did you push to get that out of the team? I don't remember pushing a button, but <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever it was. Uh, you know, I certainly want to, you know, I, the, the message I had for two days you know, I think it came out of one of my assistants' mouth uh, when we're when we're cha- making some of these changes. It's it's got to be us versus them. It's got to be us versus them. And I kept on reiter- reiterating that uh, that terminology uh, through the two day process that um, our defense has got to you know we got to feel that uh, that help side. Uh, we got to feel that on the you know from a ball pressure standpoint that everybody's got each other's back. And you know, with some of the changes, you're going to give up a lot more uh, threes. But uh, going into the game, you, you probably looked at the first two games in conference play. You know, we were probably giving up close to 45 points in the paint, and um, you know, wasn't exactly stellar. But we only gave up 28 in the paint tonight. I was just going to ask about that. I don't know how much you can get into like what the, the defensive changes were, but when you were we're coming up with them. Was it with that in mind, stopping those runs at the rim? Kind yeah. Of, yeah. Then, the, then the isolations in the post. Uh, you know, you get too spread and, and you get the wrong matchup when you don't have a, a true five out there. Uh, it becomes very hard to to, to mitigate. So, um, yeah, no, we knew in the, in the game of basketball, it's always it's always when you're game planning, you try to figure out what you're going to live with, and. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, whether that might be a, a, a skip pass three or or a mid range shot, you know, and, and run somebody off the line, whatever that may be. But uh, that's kind of the the way we had to look at it. And it's like, okay, if we're going to shore up the points in the paint, we're going to have to live with something. And uh, consequently, you know, they, I know they got several of them late, but they hit nine threes on us. So um, there's always a weakness in, in every every uh, scheme defensively, and and uh, you know they shot the ball well. And credit to Probably the one of the best pure shooters I've seen in the game, and and there's no reason, or there's certainly a reason why he's got to where he's at, what fifth and all time and three point makes. He's a he's a pure shooter and an ace must, so um, he's a special player. Josh, can you talk about uh, Pat's performance tonight? I mean, it just seemed like he had a look in his eye. Yeah, and we just I just keep on trying to feed that fire. You know, I told told someone on whether radio show or something that. Uh, you know he's had a couple good games in a row, and we keep on building on that. And and he's carrying himself differently. You can see the confidence in his eyes, and uh, you know he, he's working as hard as anybody uh, to take take advantage of some of these uh, one-on-one opportunities. 
you know, when he's got space in practice and, you know, we saw the opportunity in, in game, uh, we could go to him and, and he took full advantage of him when we set him up. So uh, credit to him. He's, he's been uh, balling for us and he's locked in and, and that's what we need at a, you know, top to bottom for us to be successful. Opponents have been trying to get the ball out of Kerr's hands, obviously. So do you change the way the offense is set a little bit to maybe try to get him to draw things, to create some opportunities for other people to set and run it? Or yeah, is I mean, it just his ability to attack that? As you saw, I mean, I, I, I ran three different guys out there at point at any given time. So Kerr can play off the ball, and, and sometimes that's even beneficial for you because he can make the right pass on the turn. And... Um, to get him get some movement and then get him on the backside to make that pass or, or you know, so. Uh, but he, he's really good at taking care of the ball and getting out of double teams. But we just, in the last few games, we haven't um, punished people for, for the double teams. And that's why they continue to go to it. And we talk about hockey assists and short rolls. And uh, we weren't short rolling and, and we weren't making that extra pass and the ball kept on sticking. So, you know, we hit home. You know, with our guys the last couple of days, that uh, we need to wait, be way more balanced, and and that ball is going to move, and, and we continue to work the offense and work the offense. I said, even even going into the game, I told them, you know, I can live with a shot clock violation if you guys just run so much offense and you just keep on passing it. I'll take that turnover, you know, um, but that's uh, you know, we really shared the ball and we were uh, way more. Uh, team oriented on the defense or the offensive end tonight, and so there's some changes offensively and some things we cleaned up, uh, but probably credit to our defense in terms of how we won this game. Your changes defensively, was this something you had tried at some other point during the season, or was this completely new? Or uh, for the most part, this is it's really. Uh, tweaking a few things schematically is not a whole lot different than what we've played in the past, but uh, um, you know we just put putting a lot more you know help side into the equation. Coach, there have been a lot of close games that you guys have fallen on the wrong side of this year. Obviously, the free throws late did that kind of creep into your mind that here we go again. In any sense? Yeah, <laughs> it did. Um, Hopefully I didn't uh, wear it, wear it on my face, but uh, you know it certainly when you know what do we leave fourteen on the table and probably some more in terms of one on ones. I don't know how many one on ones we we miss front ends, but uh, yeah, I mean as a coach and you you see those not falling late, uh, and then you see Ace Miss you know come down and hits the shots he's making. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was on my mind. You try to. Try to just figure out how to, you know, put a clean slate, but um, and clear your mind in those situations. But uh, yeah, it's we we wear some of those losses, and and they keep on carrying with us. And and you know, the season, a couple of these games, two or three of these games go our direction, and we put them in the right, uh, you know, win loss column. Um, you know, we probably have a lot more confidence right now. Uh, but regardless, you know, I keep on telling these guys, it's, you know, I feel like we're kind of like that shooter in a slump. So we got to see one go down. We got to see one down, and we can we can uh, go down for us, and we can we can build on it and and get that confidence rolling. So hopefully that's the the game that they realize that you know we're just as good as anybody. You know we play each and every night if we play that way and we play that well together. Coach, if you look, I'm sorry. If you if, if you look at really until like the the last maybe three or four minutes of the game when, when Aceman starts getting hot and, and you guys are going on the line a lot. Really up until that point, it was kind of one of those, you know, ugly, muddy it up kind of games. And, and I'm wondering, is that the style that you kind of want? Because I, I know you had some ideas with offensively coming into the season. and It's kind of the style that the league plays. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I, the first 14 games after the, the Saturday, you know, the first, uh, you know, Saturday to Wednesday, you know, you, all 14 games have been played in the league. And like I told him, I said that the average uh, margin of victory is six, and then the winners are on average scoring 71, and the losers on average are scoring 65. I was like, guys, we're giving up 85 points a game after two games. So, um, you know, we can, we can pinpoint some things on the offensive end and tweak some things and, and be more efficient there. But at the end of the day, in this league, 
you got to hang your hat on defense. And um, it's really, really hard to, to give up two and try to get three quick on the other end to, to have that mentality and win games. You're not just, just going to outscore people. So um, the chemistry and the changes we made on the defensive end, that's probably the reason we won, but the, also the, the, the buy-in offensively to, to get better looks and, and uh, you know, you know not, not be so quick with our shot selection. Josh, you added somebody to the roster. Um, how did that transpire? He come to you. You come went to him. And, and what couldn't Aiden eventually provide? You? Well, I met Aiden um, probably over a year ago. You know, I was out on the recruiting trail and uh, out in Kentucky, and, and um, I met him. You know, and I saw him play for the first time. Uh, you know, when I was scouting someone else, and. They introduced me to him because he was, you know, committed to West Virginia to play football, and he's a pretty, he's a good basketball player, you know, and he was a tough, tough-minded, strong guard, and 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 he competed, and you know, I, I he was such a nice young man, and uh, I carried on that relationship with him, and I told him when I get to Morgantown, you know, come by the office, and if you need anything, let me know, happy to help in any any way, and. And he took me up on that. He showed up in the fall and, and stopped by and introduced himself to the staff. And, and uh, I told him, I said, you know, if you want to get a run in, I know he loves the game of basketball, come by and, and jump in open gym with our guys. And so he played a couple opportunities he, he took to, to play with our guys. And so our guys knew him. And, and uh, you know, he, he'll text me from time to time, you know, throughout the, uh, the season and, and stayed in touch. And, and when, and when football was over, he hit me up and said, uh, would you mind uh, can I take you up on that offer of coming in and uh, joining the team? And I said, sure, love to have you. And he's just a high character kid and a guy that wants to compete every day. And, and uh, we're really happy to have Aiden, you know, in whatever capacity that may be. Yeah, so Coach Brown to sort of work it out, say, yeah, is this yeah, okay? I'd, we, the, we had a couple conversations even in the fall about it before he jumped into open gym. and. And he was good with it, and and uh, I certainly want to make sure that was was good with Coach Brown. And and football is his priority, and, and it'll continue to be his priority. But uh, if he can help us and he wants to be involved, uh, I'd love to have him each and every day. And so, you know, with Aiden, we're one and zero, so it's going in a good direction. <laughs> Josh, in a tight game like this, there's hundreds of plays almost that, that seem to be key to you know keep changing it. As it goes on, sometimes some of them are overlooked. So, uh, a Cook's block shot and the three pointer he made. I mean, I, I thought they made a big difference in the game. Yeah, so huge was, difference, yeah. huge difference. And uh, I gave all those guys a hug, and and I was so happy for all of them, you know. And 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 the celebration was fun. And when I gave Cook a, a hug, he he was smiling ear to ear, and he said, "Defense is fun, isn't it?" So um, he he can. Make a lot of money in his career, wherever that may be. If just uh, with that niche, you know, he can he can really uh, affect shots, and and he's playing out of position too right now, and it's, he's not happy with it. Uh, but he's he's I wouldn't say he's not happy with it. He'd rather be playing his position, but he's doing everything he can to help us win. And uh, you know, he's not a five man by any means. And but uh, we we only had Jesse to start the year, and we didn't have depth there. So uh, losing losing Jesse, and then having a uh, Cook and Pat do everything they can for us to to shore that up and guard those uh, fives in our league, it, it's going to be it's a challenge for both of them. You know, Pat's a lot bigger and stronger, but a Cook's got that quick twitch and can change shots down there. But um, yeah, it's. Uh, I love guys like that as a coach. You, you want guys that have that approach. You know, defense is fun. You know, it's uh, it's going to help us uh, going down. You know, you know, as we head into league play and get deep into league play. Kind of like the Ohio State game, where Raekwon got in that early foul trouble in that game, and yet, you know, you guys are playing and then you had the lead. Same thing tonight. He gets the early foul trouble, and then you guys still have the lead at halftime. Um, What's the what's the transition? I mean, obviously you don't want to tell the kid not to be aggressive. And then, are you surprised by the way you guys continue to play when he's on the bench? No, I'm not surprised by it. You know, it's kind of the reason why I, I, I changed the lineup um, today. You know, not only is you know 
between Kobe and, and Noah, they're some of our best defenders, but from a rotational standpoint, I mean, Noah didn't do anything wrong by any means, but he took on the role and, and said, yeah, I'm fine with coming off the bench. And not only do, does he come in as an extra ball handler if you need to get Kerr out, he also is a dynamic scorer if you need to get Ray out. So um, starting all three of those guys, we kind of saw that if we had to start our rotations early and um, get those guys out, they all need a, um, a blow at the same time, it, it becomes an issue. So he's 100% bought into the team and took that role and said, yeah, absolutely, coach. And um, you know, you know, you don't want to, you know, upset anybody that's n done nothing wrong. But uh, when you approach it like that, and you got a kid that's all in about the team, and he said, "Let's do it," um, it's it's makes everything a lot more, you know, it's a lot more helpful for a coach. One more on Aiden for me. They let you in the gym because their their coach is a pit guy, right? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, he he's a great guy, and and he's actually. You know, really connected to Aiden, um, even personally. But uh, uh, Jamar Johnson and and his coach actually played together, so you know they had that connection as well. So, and we were just you know out there recruiting, you know, uh, last week. So got a chance to chop it up with them again. But um, he's just a program guy, a guy that is going to give everything he's got every single day. And who doesn't? Uh, one another strong, you know, defensive minded guy on the floor each and every day to turn up the pressure and practice. And if that's all he does, uh, that's helpful to us. Did he play any game? I mean, you haven't seen him enough maybe to determine. But uh, we haven't. You know, if it works out and, and everybody's okay with it, I have no I'd, no problem with putting him in if uh, the situation calls for him. I mean, he's just so, he's so far, far behind in terms of what we've done this far. So it will be. You know, I could see him being a very vital member member of our scout team in the, in the short term, uh, but trying to learn everything that we have in place right now might be a challenge, and and especially this late. But he is a very bright kid, so we'll see how that transpires. Josh um, Quinn, I think he played like last eight minutes, and a lot of good things happened when he was in there too. Is that first step back toward where he want where you want him to be, where he wants to be? Yeah, I mean, I I need Quinn. Um, and we, we need him to get that swagger back. But, uh, you know, having him on the floor, especially he's a really good decision maker. You know, even even when shots aren't falling, he can make uh, good decisions with the ball and probably our best passer to forward position. Uh, so you can run a lot of things through him. So, you know, you know I feel it, it's really nice uh, from our standpoint to have Quinn taking that ball out when you, you put the guards in the press break and, and they can get open. So uh, that's very helpful, and, and it was huge down the stretch. And I think he did he miss any free throws. I think he missed a couple. But, you know, he, typically you're, you're going to trust Quinn to, to knock all those down at the free throw line there late. So and, um, It was brief, but you played a cook and, and Pat together too. Um, Situational? Is that something you wanted to try out? I probably can't do it too much. That, we look at that, but the, the problem is if they both need out at the same time. Um, so uh, Cook's certainly uh, more of a four uh, than Pat is. Uh, Pat's become, um, you know, he can shore us up on the defensively from the five, probably easier than a Cook can. Uh, so I have no problem playing them together. It's just got to be. Uh, right situation, rotational, uh, with your rotations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, I'd like to give uh, you know West Virginia a lot of credit for tonight. They came out and really set the tone early uh, with physical play, and you know we didn't value taking care of the ball uh, early in the game. But give those guys a lot of credit. They made shots early. Uh, they came out, you know, had a great crowd, and uh, they uh, competed at a very high level. Coach, their defense, you said you're, you didn't value the ball, so you had turnovers. Their defense, your mishandles? What, well, I what think a combination that? of both. I thought they, they, they definitely tried to go out hard tonight, for sure, no doubt about that. Um, you know, they're not the kind of team that turns teams over, though. They're not a pressuring team. You know, so, um, you know, I'm not going to take anything away from their defense in regards to that. You know, we, we just have to do a better, t you know, taking care of the ball ourselves. 
and getting shots on our terms. Sort of speak to the life on the road in the Big 12. Um, you know, it's, it's just never easy no matter who you play. Well, I think home all way. I think, uh, you know, on any given night, you gotta, you got to come and bring your A game. You know, um, every night there's not a bad team in this league. Um, you know, got great coaching in this league. Um, you know, so you're going to have to come out every night and play your best basketball, you know, and you got to put everything into every game uh, that you're, you're playing, whether you're at home or on the road. I don't know how like, far you go back when you're scouting a team, but Sumnick from West Virginia is obviously a guy who's been playing well as of late, much different than what he was earlier. What, what do you see when, when you're scouting? Do you see a much different guy than, than maybe you saw Previously. Well, he's the one physical guy on the, on the front line. I mean, you know, he's a guy that brings the physicality. You know, you go back to the Ohio State game, he was really active with offensive rebounds. And when you're coming in 15 feet in, we had to match his physicality around the basket. And, you know, he took it to us early in the first half and had offensive rebounds. He dunked the basketball on us. So he set the tone with his physicality, and we didn't match it early. How much did it hurt from the Sioux fell down? Well, I mean, you, it always hurts if you have a starter that uh, uh, gets disqualified from the game and you don't have him on the floor, you know, in meaningful minutes. But, uh, you know, we had to continue to work and kept playing playing the game. I thought Max continued to play at a high level uh, in terms of scoring the basketball for us. And, uh, but but any time you, you lose a guy, it always hurts. Is there any time down the stretch there when you were trying to get back uh, – to within a basket or whatever, when you felt like you might have it going, and what happened that it didn't get there? Well, there were a couple of possessions where it could have went either way. I mean, in terms of a trap, and we get a steal here, there. You know, they they turn the ball in, over trying to inbounds the basketball. So, you know, you play it all the way all the way to the end in terms of trying to uh, to make some things happen. Coach, uh, you meant West Virginia's physicality, the way you put it. Um, something they haven't always shown throughout the season. So does that kind of surprise at all, or do you almost kind of expect that from a team that's kind of back into the corner? Well, we try to take pride ourselves in trying to be a physical team, you know, and uh, having a physical mindset. You have to have that in the Big 12. You know, year in and year out, if you don't have a physical mindset, man, it's, it's going to be really hard for you. You don't have a mindset that you're going to sit down and really guard and try to put consecutive stops together. But, you know, we knew again uh, that uh, – that uh, the big fella was going to be a physical player inside for us, and we're going to have to deal with that tonight. And uh, he, uh, when you have one guy playing that way, it makes everyone else feel like they can play with some toughness as well. Okay. Anything else, Coach? Look like some of your defensive ideas to try to get the ball out of Creases hands early, double him quick. And was that your idea coming in? And did anything else hurt you when he did give up the ball? No, we definitely wanted other people to have to initiate their offense. He's a guy that. Uh, Initiates offense a lot for those guys. Want to disrupt what they were trying to get done in terms of making somebody else uh, start the offense. We had we had some success with that throughout the course of the game, and uh, um, you know, again, anytime you put a team on the line 41 times and we turn it over 22 times, it's going to be really hard for you. Thank you. All. Appreciate that.